woman and you are made up of many layers. Do you feel me? Right? So for example, you might be a high level corporate exec. You might be someone who owns her own business. You're a mom, you're a friend, you are a daughter, a sister, perhaps you can have so many roles in your life. Right? So if this is you and you feel me, you feel right. Somebody feels me, right? There's so many layers to who we are. And so perhaps what you found is that in all of those layers, you've gotten to a place where you're kind of dissatisfied that despite the fact you've got all the things, all the trappings, the home, the house, the family, the whatever, the big job, the, the dream thing, and you got there and you went, is this it? Is this all there is? Right? And even though there's so many layers to you, there's something that's kind of missing. And if this is you, then hi, my name is Jen. I'm the founder and owner of Laughing Lotus Wellness. I'm a transformational purpose coach and expert. And what I do is work with women just like you who are feeling really stuck despite the fact that they are so brilliantly successful, smart, talented, done all the things, have the success, have the money, have the things and got there and went, I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. And if that's you, that was me at 40. And so it's been a few years now, um, and I'm not telling you how many um, because I'm that chick, but I'm going to tell you something. I want to talk today about the layers. One of the things I love to do when I work with clients is really address the layers of who you are. And I'm going to talk about why, because the layers are actually a really important facet of the work that I do and why. So, so what I love to do is help women get really clear how they got where they are, where they want to go and how they're going to do that. Right. So that's really the big base of where we want to start our work together, because if you're not clear, it's very hard to make transition and change if you don't even know what it is that you're kind of dealing with. Right. Um, and so what happens is in my work with clients, and I just was reading a beautiful email from one of my clients, I printed it off because I was so stoked. It was so, it had such beautiful energy flowing out of it. I like printed it off and I'm going to put it in her, uh, in her folder for her. Um, so beautiful. And so what I love doing is watching women harness their energy. I just got off of a live in another um, community that I'm in and I was talking about that harnessing of the energy. And so harnessing the energy allows us to address the layers of our being. So let's talk about the different kinds of layers. Let's define that first, right? We want to awaken this up, right? That's the whole idea of this conversation. And I realized that as I do my work, it's sort of like the forest with the trees. I can forget to explain some of the, the steps I take and why I take them. Um, and I was like, you know, I need to talk about this layer piece because it's so important. And so what I did for you earlier was I talked about the layers that are kind of like roles, right? So many of us have roles. Very often, unfortunately, and un, uh, not an uncommon myth for people when I talk about purpose is that's what they'll give me. I am a woman who is a mother. I'm a daughter. I'm a CEO. I'm a you know nurse practitioner. I'm a whatever. They're going to give me their roles. Okay. And that's lovely, but those are really small aspects actually of what you're bringing because your, your biggest purpose is actually energetic. Oh, I know that might be a new idea, but we want to bring it in because it's super important. So instead of looking at our layers as just the roles, let's kind of take that. Okay. We got that right. That makes sense. Like how we would do that. Those are the layers of my being my friend. Great story. Quick story. Cause it's funny. Years ago, she's actually an inspiration for this, this, the way that I like write this all out and symbolize it. She said that her husband was like a, a three layered cake. <laughs> And they were talking about, she must have read it somewhere about the complexity of someone and how many layers you are. So first of all, comment for me, how many layered cake do you think you are? I think I'm like a 30. I think I'm like a 30 layer cake, right? And she was saying he was so loving and simple, not in like a mind way, but like he was just so easy going. She's like, I think he's like a three layer cake. And I'm like, oh, I'm definitely not a three layer cake, right? So first of all, tell me how many layers you got, okay? And then we're going to talk about why does that matter, right? So I thought that was so hilarious. and like how kind of complex you are. I'm like, he's like a three-layer cake. Well, I'm definitely more than a three-layer. And what we want to think about is the way that we're created. So we want to do two things. You're created in layers. We're going to talk about that. And you want to heal and work in your layer. So that's number two. So number one, you're made of layers. What does that mean? The way that I envision you is a bit of a yogic principle that I've sort of adopted and morphed. Sorry, yogic principle and philosophy. Um, I took my own uh, regards and how to morph that into something that works for me. And why I do that is so that people begin to have an understanding about how they show up in the world. So there's sort of this outer layer before you, right? Have you ever noticed people like this? So think about this for a sec. You ever had somebody come in a room and like their energy precedes them? 
Maybe they've had a really pissy day. Maybe your family, because your family could probably read pretty well. So let's just say you're, let's say you are a mom or you're a partner and your partner comes home, your kid comes home, they've had a shitty day at work or a shitty day at school and they come in. You know what I'm talking about, right? And the fireworks are kind of coming off them without them saying a word. That's energy, right? So we actually have this kind of awareness around us that sometimes people refer to as an aura. That's totally true. I, I sort of tend to use it in more of a purposeful way, but like an aura, your energy is flowing out from your person and people will read it, right? Okay. So then you move inward and there's the physical layer. There's the, there's the parts of the skin and the bones and the parts that are, you know, like the physical boundary, right? So we want to think about that. Then we move inward and there's that emotional, mental, so the thought layer, the emotional layer, right? And so then we're moving into intuition, wisdom, then into the heart and then into the soul. So if you want to imagine that we took and an, from a person and they were a cake, Let's make you a cake because there's something creepy about talking about cutting through human beings. And we're going to cut through that cake and there's seven layers and each layer is a different color. That's really how I imagine you're wired. And the reason I teach it that way is so that you begin to understand that you are a multifaceted and complex being. So we might know it here, but it's different to know it here and also to have a visual to represent it. I'm a big fan of that. And so what I began to understand at 40 and why it wasn't feeling so satisfactory to me anymore to be doing psychotherapy by itself was I was being called once again to kind of transfer like for my practice and my growth and I was evolving. And so if you want to imagine those layers of your being, something like a psychotherapy practice or traditional coaching practice is likely going to attend to that thought layer and your emotional layer the most right? Okay. makes perfect sense. We're going to talk. We're going to process. We're going to work things out. We're going to problem solve. We're going to do the things. Okay. Powerful transformation can happen in those places. Okay. And so, and, but then I think, okay, but I have all these other layers. And if I know, and I want to take you all the way to the deep science for one hot second, if I know that we have pioneers in psychology and psychiatry that have done all of the chat about the fact that we are holding energy in ourselves, Right? We just know it to be true. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we just know that in our very molecules, our atoms, our cells, we are carrying the stories and the energy of said stories in our bodies. So if we think about it, we are walking, talking balls of light and energy that are holding all of the stories and the memories that we've ever experienced. Our emotions, our thoughts have energy. All We are a bundle of walking, energetic expression. Okay. So if I think about that and I, and I have a tough experience and I've held that somewhere in a cell, somewhere in my body, deep in a layer, hidden away, because that's where they like to go. And I'm only ever attending to a couple layers, one or two layers. The likelihood is that I'm carrying around a kind of a, uh, what kind of word do I want to put it? I, almost like like a fog, if you will, almost like a fog right inside the cell. And so what happens is that that's foggy and it means that it's not quite ever getting as clear as I need it to be. It's never getting cleared out quite the same way that I want it to be. Okay. So I'm carrying this around. It's in my body. It's somewhere inside the energetic expression of all of the layers of how you're actually created. Right. So I want you to imagine like, right, give yourself this visual because it just helps. And I think, oh, shit, I'm probably missing some. I'm probably missing some. So the way that I've traditionally done my work or done my practice and I want to make changes, it's I'm not getting to all the layers. So enter da -da -da -da, meditation, breath work, movement, all the things, right? So we start tapping into using different tools that travel all the way through the layers. So it's almost like getting, if, I'm, if I have a seven layer cake and now I've got the perfect knife to cut through all of that right? Imagine. And you want a piece of the cake. <laughs> so how many layers are you? Maybe you're 30. I've got a really big freaking knife. Okay. I've got 30 layers and we're going to go through, right? And we want to make a really nice clean slice so that I can take that piece out and enjoy my cake, right? So I have to really have a very clear direction on a tool to use for such things. So the perfect ones that really kind of attend to almost all of the layers for healing meditation, breath, energy work. Okay. Those are some of the things that go through 
all of the layers, not one or two, right? So if I just said to you, for example, go work out. Working out's powerful. Working out's important, right? Vitality is important. I'm not saying, right? What you eat is energy. When you work out, it's energy. You both create it and receive it, right? So we are walking, talking, infinity symbols of energy. Our bodies, our energy around us, all of it in exchange, okay? So this is big kind of big thinking, right? And so what you want to do, though, is you really want to attend to all the layers of your being, not one or two. So if I just say, well, it's gonna, you're going to be best off if you just go work out. Well, that's awesome. That's one dimensional. Think about that, right? So I always joke about flat Stanley posts, right? Which is really like just a graphic. We are not flat Stanleys or flat Stellas. We are these multidimensional human beings with all of this energy we're carrying. So if we only ever do practices that only ever attend to one or two layers, we're not really healing things the way that they need to be healed in the depth that they could use to be healed. Also, you're likely not accessing your energy in the same way. So if we talked about those foggy cells, I want you to imagine what it would feel like over time, if I never address any of this stuff, I'm carrying that fog with me. What does the fog do? It skews how my light shines into the world. It skews how I feel. So lots of times people will come to me and they have been in therapy before. They've been in coaching before. They've done some, some practices. What they haven't done is put that all together. And energy is really the basis for what I teach and what I work in because it's my favorite. And so it's the space where I believe the most profound healing is actually happening. And it's also your most profound superpower is taking care and harnessing that and tucking it all in to be able to use it to deliver the various forms of purpose you're all carrying around with you. It is the vessel right? It's like the plate you put the cake on. <laughs> so we need to have a vessel. But if I'm not taking care of all of this, right, then I'm not having a really incredible layered cake. I'm having like one or two and it's maybe a little foggy. It's not as fluffy and nice as we want it to be, right? So for the purpose of our conversation, I just want you to imagine harnessing the ability to do things that actually access you on all of your layers. So furthermore, right? So there's the layer of you, there's the layer of your being, there's the layers of your energy and you wanna access all of that, right? And then you also wanna imagine that healing and working within it is also gonna take layers of work. So my favorite thing is to really work with clients to utilize at least two or three or four practices that support their energetic and evolution process. So I might send them home with, they do coaching with, so when they're with me, when they're with me, they're coaching with me, they're getting coaching. So they're getting process work. So the psychological background, they're getting personal growth and development. So evolution and learning, they're receiving energy practices and healing, right? And we talk about spirituality, and the depth of your soul and what you want to do here, why you're here. So they're getting multi-layered, right? But you could stack up and just listen to this, right? I could stack up that I do some, some learning, some growth work. I do some yoga and meditation, Qigong, or I go like pump iron at the gym and I go and I do meditation five, six, seven days a week. And I do um, breath work, right? So all of a sudden you can see that as you do this, you're also creating this incredibly awesome layered cake of healing. And so the most power comes in when you're actually activating a whole handful of these incredible energetic tools and psychological tools. That's where the money is. And over the years of practicing in 20 years, what I saw was the people that I worked with who really wanted to combine tools because I was always encouraging it, did the best. They healed the most quickly and they healed the most effectively. And so I just know that at the core of who you are, that is actually going to be the most beneficial thing that you can do is layer and stack in, which is exactly why I coach the way that I do. I'm not coming at you with one thing, right? I'm not coming at you with one thing because, because here's the other trick. Energetic tools don't all apply to someone the same way. So I provide Reiki and other energy healing tools, but right, but not everybody's going to love meditation the same way. So I might have to get creative and how I'm going to help them find that kind of stillness. Um, not everybody's going to love the same kind of movements, right? So what we're doing is we're always kind of trying to figure out 
what most suits you for who you are that's going to light you up and offer the best effect, right? That's really what we're looking for is like how to harness that, get that, grow that, and have you take that with you so that everywhere you go, you've now learned how to harness your energy, right? So, okay, so there's the layer cake. I want to hear about how many layers of cake you are. Please drop it in the comments. Um, are you complex? Or are you pretty simple, right? So I love that that analogy because that cracks me up. And every time I think about it, I think about my friend Natalie. It makes me laugh. Um, so how many layers of cake are you? Are you pretty complex? Or do you feel like you're pretty straightforward and simple, right? So you might have a really low layer of cake. You might have a really tall one. I have a pretty tall one. Um, and so everyone's wired differently, right? And I want you to imagine that those layers are made up, again, of all the different layers of your being as you move into the core of your being. And then I want you to imagine that you're stacking layers of healing modalities because that's important, right? So I want you to think about that. And the other big piece I'm going to send away today is self-awareness. And this is so powerful um, that if we're not self-aware of what we're bringing into our energetic field, so if everything outside of us could flow in and out, right? So if we kind of imagine that the energy is moving in and out of us all the time, which it is, you're in a constant state of exchange with the world in terms of your energy. And I'm driving to work. And I've got five, I've got a great playlist. Okay, right. Who has a playlist? You know what I'm talking about. Okay. So you've got your playlist in the span of five minutes. You've heard five different, completely vibrationally different types of music. In one, it's this angry nine inch nails, something or other. The next is a classical Jennifer Thomas, super exhilarating, beautiful piano tune. The next one is like, you know, black eyed peas and you're rocking out and you're dancing in your seat. You've just experienced three energetic transformations in the span of three minutes. Now, why does that matter, right? So I talked about this this week in my webinar. Why does this matter? Because in the span of, say, five songs in 10, 15 minutes, depending on how long the song is, you've experienced transformation really subtly in the background of your being. That's real. So, so I want you to imagine, and we're sort of mindless to it, right? I mean, unfortunately, and uh, most of us, right, we're just like driving around doing our thing. We don't, we're not paying attention. Like, it's just music. But it's not just music, okay? I want you to notice what happens as you listen to different kinds of music. So let's say I wake up, I at right side of the bed. I wake up, I'm in a great state, I'm fired up, I'm feeling good, and I climb into my car, right? And I'm not paying attention, I'm just driving, and in the background is some super negative, angry, ragey, angsty, depressing tunes. <laughs> that is coming in. And it doesn't mean I'm going to weep the whole day when I get to work, right? But what it does mean is it's coming in. We don't want that. I will tell you the number of days that I woke up, particularly before I made my transition out of my, my practice into where I'm meant to be, because I just needed to make a lane change. Um, the times that I had to shore myself up in my car on the way to work I, I are almost insurmountable. And... I couldn't just get mindlessly ready for my day because I would be in a bleak state. So I got super mindful about what I plugged in on my radio, like, you know, in my stereo in my car, whether it was a really beautiful podcast, an audiobook, music. It was like, it's got to be something that's going to elevate me. And so this is where we harness the energy, right? And this is, by the way, I listen to all kinds of music. This is no dissing anybody. Like I love all kinds of music. I have all those things in my playlist legitimately, okay? For real. So it's not, don't listen to it. But what we do is we mindlessly move through our lives so much of the time, we're sort of in a fog ourselves. And all these things are coming in, right? Whether around someone who's negative in the lunchroom or someone who you greet right inside the door in the day. One of my, one of my clients said she'd walk in the door, not two minutes. I'm not kidding. And one of her colleagues would say, I'm not even kidding. Well, this is going to be a shit day. She hadn't even gotten in the door for God's sakes. And two minutes in one of her colleagues notoriously would say, well, this is going to be a shit day. <laughs> that, that's horrible. So she and I had to work on like, how are we going to build you an energetic barrier so that when you go into work, that stuff pings off of you because it did permeate her. That's an awful energy to walk into. And I'm not dissing the person. I mean, a person might have something going on. I mean, that's none of my business, right? But I'm just saying right out the gate in her face was this messagery about how shit the day was going to be. Who does great with that, Right. And not just one day, not like you were having like a, an extreme weird day, like you were having a minute, like every single day. 
right? So she had to, she started taking crystals to work. She had crystals on her desk. She was using meditation in the morning and she would text me and she, she would say, I'm finally better, Jen. I got it. I prepare myself before I leave the house in the day. I'm using meditation. I have my crystals in front of me. Like that's not for everyone, right? Those are some of the combinations of things that we define for her. But like, that's amazing. She started being able to kick it, that she didn't have to sit in that juice. And that is juice, my friends, when you think about who you're around, right? So I wanted to use the music example because it's so easy for us to grab onto. But I want you to understand people are no different. So if you're in company with people who are like, this will never work. This day is shit, right? This job sucks. Our boss is terrible. If it, if you're in that and it, it's no, again, somebody's where they are. This is not about judgment, but you're absorbing that. Let me do one more story because this is, this is one of my very favorites of all time of a great experience a client had with me. This was years ago before I talked about energy the way I'm talking about it here because this is a whole new, right? Last five, six, seven years, I've really started talking about energy. But before that, she came in and she said to me, she was so sweet. She goes, Jen, I'm reading The Secret. Awesome. What do you think of it? Right? This is back in the day when that was new and that makes me very old, but that's fine. And she, I'm like, awesome. What do you think? She goes, I'm going to tell you something. She goes, I'm going to ask you a question. And I know she's conspiratorial asking me. So like, I know she thinks that I'm going to be like, oh no. And she goes, Jen, it says in there that your thoughts dictate your reality. And I know she's like, this is bullshit. And she goes, what do you think about that? And I go, let me be honest. Yeah. I go, yep. <laughs> so here's the power of her story, right? And so we laughed about it and I have a great sense of humor. She has a great sense of humor. We're cracking up, but I'm like, yeah, it actually is a thing, right? Okay. Case in point, same woman worked in a female dominant field. Okay. I'm not gonna say what, just a female dominant profession. We'll go to work every day. The women she worked with bitched about their husbands every day. Um, picked on them, picked them apart, talked negatively about them. I mean, it was like awful. And my client was coming in and she was like, Jen, I'm just like, th they're inundating with this. And now I feel like I'm looking at my husband and I'm frustrated. And I'm like, yeah, yep. And so we talked and we found another community of women outside of work that she would go spend time with. And they all adored their husbands. And guess what happened? She stopped seeing her husband the same way. So these are those really bottom of the barrel. They're super clear examples of ways that we are a facet of the energy that we are in. And I cannot emphasize it enough. I know it sounds like some magical bullshit. It's not. It's a fact. You are a part of the energetic expression of the things that you are around, both people, places, environments, music. Um, every single thing around you is having an influence, whether you notice it or it's riding around back here. Powerful. Okay. And watching her reclaim her marriage based on the energetic expression that she was in was a big deal for her life. And so I want you to really begin to grow that self-awareness about, okay, like wherever I go, I'm taking in that energy. I'm taking that in from the friends I hang out with, the colleagues I spend lunch with, to how I spend my lunch. I'm telling you what, like even honestly, like when you're listening to music and podcasts in the morning, if you're kind of slow to get going or you're kind of having a hard time, yo, don't put in an intense podcast. I want you to grow and learn by all means. Namaste. Okay. But maybe it's that you, if you're having a rough day, you listen to some soft, beautiful music or some inspirational something, right? Preaching at you, light you up, right? And then you do the intense podcast over lunch because you're already awake, you're rolling, you got the good energy flowing. We just can be mindful about how we engage with our energy. And we don't do this a lot in our culture. And this is not me picking on anybody. Until I went and did a lot of my energy training and realized I was an energy healer, which I did had not have any single idea until I was 40 years old and went to my own energy healing for the first time. And I was like, who would the what? I've been doing this my whole life. I'm a human barometer. I don't even know. I had no language for that until I was 40 years old. Zero. Okay. 
And since working in that, receiving healings, and I offer it and I receive it all the time, I'm in a constant state of exchange with both receiving and giving healing, right? Because that's really important to your well being. But I'm always watching. I'm checking for the subtle energy riding around with me. Am I feeling good? Am I feeling rough? And here's the beauty. You get to use that to your benefit. I'm wired for positivity. It's probably annoying. Hope and positivity are kind of two of the things I just have as superpowers, okay? Kind of wired that way. Um, So when I'm off, I was sick last week. I got the cooties. Not the COVID, but I got the cooties, okay? I felt like death on a stick. And I feel extra bad because energetically, it's so not how I show up. So when it's dampened, when I feel like something's dampening my layers, I'm like, like legit. Okay. (laughs) All right. Now that's just the way I'm wired. But I witnessed that and I started to have negative thoughts. Friends, I'm being real. This is total transparency. I started having these like, you know, is this working? Am I like I started doing this AC? I'm like, oh, no, bitch. Oh, no. I see you there. I see you there energy and you're dampened and you're tired and you're strung out because you're sick. And so what's happening is that negative Nelly kind of conversation was coming in. I'm like, oh, no, we'll revisit this in two days when you're well. I was like, a chunk. I was like, no. We are not doing this. We're not adding to the fact that my energy was dampened because I was physically ill. So my physical layer, listen to this, my physical layer was being affected and my physical layer impacted my thought layer. So get your brain around that. When you're physically not well, that begins to affect the other layers of your being. Here's my point, okay? So this is, I have so many points on energy. I could talk about it for eight hours straight because it is my jam. But what I really want you to think about is this. You actually have so much more power than you know that you do. Because when we begin to harness these practices, okay, you get really adept at using your power to have the energetic expression you want more of. People don't know this stuff. And this is not me picking... I was 40 before I went and got energy work. When my friend told me to go, I was like, okay, I'll go try this more friend. And like, this isn't going to do anything. <laughs> changed my life. Okay. Changed my freaking life. So what I can tell you with absolute certainty is that many of us are not out there addressing our energy with mindfulness. And that's what I want to teach women to do is to really grab all these layers of energy, see that you're made up of all those layers. You're a multi-layered cake. See that you've got some power to address the layers. You're not just at the mercy of it. You don't just have to live with whatever shows up. You actually have the capacity to shift yourself out of it. I was doing it all the time on my way to work. Because it was hard. And I wasn't feeling it. And I figured it out. I figured out a way to sort of build stuff in to help my energy so I could show up. And then understand when you're depleted, when you're angry, when you're unhappy, when you're not living like a fulfilled life and you don't feel in alignment, it flows out of you. I hate to say. Mindful right out of me. When one of my clients finally stopped me and said, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, why? You know, like in a session. Yeah. Uh, she's like, you don't laugh as much anymore. And I thought I was pulling it together. I thought I was holding it together. The hell I was. So I'll guarantee you, when you're not in those spaces, right, people feel it. When you're not in the right space, my friends, you want to examine why. Because it is maneuverable. Whether it's that you make some energy practices that help boost you to support, or you need to make some pretty freaking serious change, You're actually in a place of empowered ability to change it. You're not at the mercy. You don't have to stay there. And so I really want you to kind of put that hat on your head is that I actually have the ability to shift this for myself. And how empowered does that feel, right? Rather than feeling a victim. I have so many women that show up and they're like, I just can't do anything about this and I'm just really stuck. And Oh, you can't. And we will. And I teach them. And I got an email from my my coaching, one of my coaching clients just this morning about doing a practice and how good she feels. I sent her one of my meditations to work on so that she could be practicing it between and between our sessions and wrote me out like a two paragraph 
brilliant proclamation about how she wants to show up in the world. And so she's utilizing those tools, those tools that we work on in coaching to elevate her. And it is written all over her paper. I mean, I printed it out. It's so beautiful. I literally can feel the vibration off of her paper from her message. It was so fired up. That is literally available to all of us. This is not something Jen has special sauce <laughs> or my clients have. I mean, they all do. They're incredible people. But what I'm saying is it's not something that only we have. You have it too. And it's a matter of whether or not you have any guidance to sort of tuck in and support and learn how to utilize that to your best ability. Okay. And this is a big piece of purpose because if I feel messy and my layers are messy, right? That's how I'm showing up in the world. Or I feel really tamped down because I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore. And I know, she knows she's being called to something different. That's why she chose me. That's who chooses me. <laughs> really empowered, badass women choose me. And they're ready to make a big change. That's why she's coaching with me. This is the money. What she's saying today in this email is exactly why I get up and do my work every day. It's not even work. It's seriously so much fun. I can't even say it. It's not even work. And that's how I know I'm in alignment. Because when I get up, I'm excited to go to work. When I get up, I'm excited. I'm creative. I'm motivated. I'm inspired. Right? That's how I know. So this is, these are the markers of energy I'm also looking for is how fired up do I feel? How fired up, inspired, motivated, right? Present, loving, connected. That's all energy. And there are things that we can learn to really begin to read. What is off with me last week? I was sick. I knew it. I was like, oh no. So I put the pause button on those nasty thoughts and made myself step away from that energetically. I'm like, that's not going to serve me. In two, three days, if I need to return to that and that's still there, it's not. I knew it. Well, I knew what it was. I was sick and I was under the weather and it was tamping my energy. It was like, mur, mur, mur. and then my thoughts start going and then my, my emotions start going. So what happens is all those layers work together. If one is off, it can affect all the others. So the healing energy that you want to do is something that attends to all the layers. And so this is just such, it is, it is literally for me, it is my passion because it's something that I truly believe women don't know they've got. Or they vaguely know it. We talk about energy. We're getting better in our culture, but it's something that honestly, your energetic health, hear me when I say this, soapbox, your energetic health is absolutely as important as your mental health and your physical health. Absolutely. And the only thing I regret about energy work and where I'm at now is I wish I had been able to bring it to my clients when I was doing psychotherapy. I really, and I did but it wasn't vocal. I wish I'd vocalized it with them. That wasn't the state of where I was in my evolution. Like I needed to get here because I would talk about it differently. I would educate differently and I would do the work differently, which is why I'm doing it this way, because this is what feels really good to me. This is like in alignment, the creativity and the sound healings and the, all the different tools for energetic healing. Right. But you have access to all of this and you just have to learn to harness it. And so that's a big piece of the work that I get to do. I get to do it. It's literally not work. It's like what I love in my soul is teaching women. I want to teach millions of women this skill because it is so life altering and evolutionary for you that when you can align that like my energetic health is absolutely just as important as my physical health and that they're all linked, that's the, that's the real deal. They're all linked. So if I'm wandering around the world and I'm like, God, you know, I kind of have all the things, but something doesn't feel quite right. And like, I don't know, like, I feel like I should really be happy, but I'm not. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Time to look at your emotional, all the layers. <laughs> something, something is amiss. And I'll go in to do some emotional work. Just last piece. Energetic work with someone, right? It's very fascinating. This is really cool. When I do some work once and I went, something's happening here. Okay. And I was like, you have a thought. I literally looked at my you have a thought about it. And she went, yeah, D, 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 D. We cleared that, boom, work done. But just like that, I knew in one of her layers, in one of those circles, those concentric circles, she had something stuck. And what that does is it prevents the information from flowing all the way through, if that makes sense, okay? That's what I'm talking about. That kind of awareness, that kind of growth, that kind of change, so effing powerful. This is like, I could talk about this for eight hours straight and never take a breath or sleep, just say. 
Um, so I wanted to put this out there because this is one of my great passions and I wanted to define it so that I can talk a little bit more about that in here. And you're not all like, what is that? Right? So we want to start with that idea of the layered cakes and just the way that we're made of so many layers, right? From all the way from the outside of us in this sort of auric field, all the way into the very inner part of your soul, just to have a visual aid. And then I want you to imagine, right? You know that you're a multi-layered faceted human being. You know that you're made of lots of layer of cake, right? And so I love that. So how many layers are you? Like I said, I think I'm like 30. I don't know. My husband's like three. He's so chill and like easy going. Like I'm like all these like, oh, always growing, always moving and changing, right? So I've got more layers. But the, the number of layers don't really matter as much as you're grasping with me. That idea that you are actually capable of addressing them. And you're capable of using tools and practices that address all of them to support your best and highest good to bring you into alignment. Okay. Okay. One more point, because this is a biggie too. You're actually made for alignment. And I know in our lives, we have so many things going on that sometimes it can feel very opposite of that. You're actually wired for alignment. So when we talk about alignment, right, it sounds like some, you know, woo, whatever, for people who are not really exposed to these kinds of fields, right? But really what's happening is internally, you are wired, always looking for a state of organization and peace. And in our world, it can be very hard to achieve that because there's stuff happening all the time. We're taking in energy from music and TV shows and our humans and our pets and our environments. Maybe I live in the middle of New York City and all I hear all day long is sirens and cars and right hustle and bustle. And I, don't, I really get exposed to any peace. And, and even though I love it, it's not that you don't have to love it, right? You're really in a constant state of exchange with energy. And so... But you're wired for peace. You're wired for peace. And so when we do things that help organize that inside, that alignment, that's where we feel the very best. So when I can step into a space of feeling at peace, feeling, you know, organized. So for example, last story, and we're going to close. Last story. So years ago, this is one of my favorites. Years ago, I was in yoga training certification with one of my very favorite yogis. And where there's 30 of us in a room, which is hilarious, clearly pre-pandemic, because now we would all have like heart attacks and be wearing masks. But okay, you get what I'm saying. So we're in the room. There's 30 of us. And she says, okay, we're going to do this exercise. And I love chanting, which I didn't before I started yoga certification. I thought it was some weird shit. Now I love it. So we're in the room. She said, we're going to ohm. <clears throat> I know this is so stereotypical, but roll with me. Okay, cool. She goes, I'm going to start, I'm going to lead, and then I want you to go with your own breath. I want you to, don't don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing. Just ohm. Okay, cool, right? So we're in the room, and we all start ohming, right? And she starts us, and it's pretty soon. It's cacophonous, and it's awful, and it's like a bad orchestra, right? Because, like, nobody's in tune. It, it, it. About three, five minutes in, we're all in sync. She is not guiding us at all in perfect tune and alignment, that entire room of 30 people came into complete precision with how they were doing their practice. No guidance whatsoever. That is how we're actually wired. We're wired to land in those places that bring us to wholeness. And that was exactly what happened in that space, that with all the cacophony and the sounds and the differences and the blah, 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 and the breath work and all the things that practice in that, right? And somehow, with no guidance, everything came together beautifully. That's what we're wired for. And that's a perfect moment of example of witnessing that. It was so, it was almost profound, honestly. Like, I think I was so shaken that I was like, we didn't even do anything and look at what happened. That's what you're wired for. And you will always adjust in your environments. You'll always be adjusting, micro adjustments, right? And I want you to think about the power of that and the power of the fact that you're actually wired for alignment. You're meant for alignment and peace. But we're going to have to work for it because we're exchanging energy with all kinds of chaos. Some of it within us, based on memories and tragedy and trauma and struggle. Some of it on the outside of us, the music, the environments, Mother Nature, your conflict outside of you with your partners, whatever. That's all coming in. It's all an exchange. So, man, we're going to have to work, right? You feel me? I mean, it's just so, it's just not going to be easy. But it's so doable. I hope that makes sense.
Okay, how many layers of cake are you? And I wanna hear about you. What do you think about this idea of the layers? What do you think about that idea? Does it make sense? Is it weird? Do you have questions? Talk to me about that. Like I love, 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 love questions. Like I wanna hear, but I wanted to outline this pivotal piece of my coaching and why I do it the way that I do it because I'm so profoundly dedicated to supporting people figuring out that they get to be the effing boss of their energy. You are so capable of doing this and you'll never unknow it, right? Once you learn it and learn the tools, like you never unknow it again. And once my eyes were open to all of these pieces, I've never gone back. And I feel when my energy is out of alignment, it gets out of alignment. I go get services. I'm like, hey, hey, <laughs> can I please get some Reiki or some energy healing, whatever it is, right? I go dance my ass off or I go to the salt cave and I meditate or I do things that are taking care because this is, this is a lot for all of us to carry. And with no skills, with no bags on our toolbox, like no tools, like, right, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. Then we're always at the mercy of whatever's coming in and going out. We don't have to mindlessly do this stuff, friends. We don't have to mindlessly do it. You're absolutely wired to learn these skills, to harness the energy, to step into the best and highest version of you so that you can live out your purpose. That's why we talk about it. It's all connected to purpose. If your energy is wonkadelic and you don't got any sense of what's coming and going, uh, hello, that's not serving you. Sorry, it's not. And we've all been, we've been these people and we know these people. We feel the people that feel like runaway trains, don't we? And they, and they're, they mean well, they're not malicious and they are all over the map. They are not witnessing their energy and they are certainly not engaging practices that support it. Been there. I was her. So I'm speaking from personal and professional experience both. Right. Okay. I want you to harness this. All right. My loves, here we go. We're going to close for the day. What I would love to ask you to do is to head on over to laughinglotuswellness.com. And again, that's laughinglotuswellness.com. And would you go click in, just check out my website and subscribe to my email. I would love to have you come join me in my email where I send all the things up, the updates and in some newsly every kind of month I'll toss in some fun little knowledge and wisdom and stuff like that, some freebies from time to time. You're really kind of getting the inside scoop. So if it's anything you're interested in doing, you want to connect with me, but you know that this energy stuff is a thing, I would love to see you come and join me, right? This is really where I come from. This is how I do my work. And I would love to send you over there to get signed up and subscribe and hang out with us in shared space and community. Because I've got incredible people that are hanging out with me. And so if you want to be in good community with that good energy, right? We talked about this. Community is pivotal. You want to be in community that's full of love and light and supportive energy, um, come and hang out with us, right? Come and hang out with my community and be in shared space with us because we're always bringing that kind of good energy and juice to you. Okay. All right. So I'd love to see you do that until next time, my friends, this is Jen blessings, love and light. We will see you next week as always, um, as always drop questions and comments in, in the below. Cause I love, love, love to engage with you, answer questions, join with you in your journey, support. If you've got questions, uh, please do that. That's free, right? There's it costs you nothing. If you want to ask a question or engage in some conversation about something to learn a little bit more, please always do. Cause I know some of these topics are like big and kind of heady. And so it takes us a minute to kind of like dig in and really digest it. So I'm always here to support that journey for you as well. But until next time, blessings, love and light, my friends, and may you continue to rise on your path to purpose.